So you've passed your technician license exam, you've got your call sign and license, what do you do next? Don't be one of those guys or gals that gets your license and just lets it sit on the shelf. There are so many things you can do with ham radio from emergency communications, POTA or parks on the air, talking all around the world with HF, contesting, and so much more. But with so much to do, it can get a little overwhelming. So in this guide, I'm gonna give you 10 simple things you can do when you first get your ham radio license to take your first steps to getting active and operating. This is ham radio. Starting out with number one, buying a handheld ham radio. Now, I'm guessing a lot of you already bought a handheld ham radio, but if you waited until getting your license, now is the time to pull the trigger. For your first handheld ham radio, we don't recommend getting something super pricey. Just get something easy to use and affordable to get started, like a Baofeng or a Yezu FT65R. Either one of these is great and it won't break the bank. Then, once you know what parts of the hobby you want to explore, you can always upgrade later. If you want a little extra help deciding, check out our full guide to the top five handheld radios. Number two, make your first contact on Simplex. Now that you've got your ham radio license and your first handheld ham radio, you need to make your first contact on ham radio. So many people get stuck by getting their license and they never make their first ham radio contact. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Making your first contact on ham radio is not that hard. All you really need to do is get a friend who is also a ham radio operator and program both of your handheld ham radios on the same frequency and hit the push to talk button to make your first contact. Just be sure to say your call sign at the beginning of your transmission once every 10 minutes while you're on the air and at the end of the transmission, which is required by FCC rules. For more help on making your first contact and details on things like choosing the right frequency and programming your radio, check out our guide that will take you through it step by step. Number three, join the World Radio League. Once you make your first contact on ham radio, you wanna commemorate it and have a record of that first contact. And that's why you need to get a ham radio logbook. You can sign up for a free account with the World Radio League and get a free logbook as well as a mobile app where you can track your contacts. To log your contact, all you have to do is put in the call sign of the other operator and the frequency of the contact that you made. Now, logging will become much more fun as you get more advanced with ham radio and you start operating HF or doing POTA, parks on the air, contesting, etc. But having your first contact is an achievement you don't want to miss, so get it in the log. World Radio League also has tons of other great features you can grow into for finding POTA and SOTA sites near you, finding other hams, asking questions in the community, searching for call signs, joining contests, and more. And all this is available on the mobile app as well. Number four, get a band plan. While you're making that first simplex contact, you're gonna find yourself asking, which frequencies am I allowed to use? And you definitely wanna make sure you're using the right frequencies according to your level of license to make sure you're in compliance with FCC regulations. That's why it's a good idea to go ahead and get yourself a band plan. Now a band plan just simply shows which frequencies you can use according to which level of license. It also tells you which modes of operation you can use on those frequencies like CW, voice, digital, and more. With a level one technician license, you're going to notice that most of your privileges are on the frequency ranges known as VHF or UHF, which are best for local communications. You'll also have some limited privileges on HF or high frequency, which is used for long range communications. HF contact can be especially fun because they allow direct radio to radio contact all around the world. We'll cover more on that in a moment. The most important thing is to get your band plan so that you know your frequencies and privileges. You always wanna operate legally to avoid any awkward situations or fines. We'll include a link to a free band plan PDF and a band plan poster if you want to have a high quality physical copy of your band plan. Number five, make a contact on a local repeater. With a handheld ham radio, you usually get a couple of miles of range. But what if you want to extend your range around your local community? Your technician license also lets you communicate via a repeater. A ham radio repeater is a ham radio transmitter and receiver that is usually placed on a tower or a tall building. It listens for signals and then retransmits them to a much larger area. 
By programming your handheld to transmit to the repeater, you can then repeat your signal and extend your range. A repeater will typically cover a radius of about 15 to 20 miles, but 50 or even 100 miles of range is not unheard of. To get started operating repeaters, first, use a repeater directory to find a repeater in your area. Look for repeaters that support the FM mode, which is the most common and easiest mode to use for beginners. Then, you'll need to program three details into your radio to connect to the repeater. Number one, the receive frequency, where your radio will listen for the repeater transmitting. Number two is the offset, which tells your radio which frequency to use while transmitting into the repeater. And number three is the CTCSS tone, which is the key that unlocks the repeater. Once you've programmed those details, you can say your call sign followed by monitoring to try to make a contact like November Zero Whiskey Radio Lima monitoring and see if someone calls back. Some repeaters also have nets, which are talk groups at regularly scheduled times. This is a great way to connect with hams in your local area. If you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to program your radio and make your first contact on a repeater, check out our free guide on repeaters. Number six, find a local ham radio club. Part of what makes ham radio awesome is connecting with people in your local area. If you took your ham radio license exam in person with a local club, it's good to stay in touch with them or even join their club. Early on, you'll find club members helpful to get started with repeaters and other questions as a new ham. Pretty soon, you'll be learning about different types of operating. It won't be long before you become the teacher, bringing the next group of hams along. Ham radio clubs are also a great way to get involved with the emergency response groups in your area. Clubs often have regular operating events where they may get together in a park to operate, talk groups on a net, on a local repeater, or other local meetups. Today, you can learn so much online with instructional videos like this one, but it's still great to meet with people, get hands-on with other types of equipment, and learn from some Elmers. And Elmer in ham radio is just a mentor or a teacher. With World Radio League, you can go into the Find Members Near Me section and click to find other ham radio operators in your area. Shoot them a message and make a new connection. Check the leaderboard for your state and see which ham radio operators are most active. Or go into the community chat and introduce yourself. This is also a good time to maybe look up a ham fest and see if there's a ham radio event either near you or one of the big ones that you could travel to. Number seven, install a radio on your car or truck. Don't get me wrong, handheld radios are great, but you can get much better performance, range, and ease of use while you're in your car or truck by installing a dedicated mobile radio. Especially if you plan to do any off-roading, getting a mobile ham radio in your car is a must. Mobile ham radios generally put out 25 watts of power or more as compared to just five to eight watts for a handheld ham rate. Some back of the napkin math is that you can generally get about one mile of range per watt of power on VHF or UHF. So just do the simple math there. You're getting about 25 miles of range versus five to eight miles for your handheld. Now that is way oversimplified because there are many other factors like landscape, the antenna you're using, weather conditions, and type of propagation, but you get the point. With a better, more powerful mobile radio, you're gonna get a lot better performance on the road than with your handheld. It's also worth noting that ham radio is much better than CB radios or GMS mobile radios as far as power and range. With a mobile rig, you can also get much better performance by mounting an antenna on your car. You can go crazy like this guy or get something a little more subtle. Once you're set up, you can program your radio to talk with friends on the same frequency while you're on the road or off-roading Check common simplex frequencies like 146.520, the national calling frequency, make repeater contacts, scan for activity, and much more. Number eight, upgrade the general. The level one technician license privileges are focused on the VHF and UHF frequencies, which are best for local communications. But if you wanna operate around the world with direct radio to radio communications, no internet or cell phone required, well, you need to operate on HF or high frequency. For access to most of the HF frequencies, you're gonna need a level two general ham radio license. The reason HF frequencies allow worldwide contacts is because in this frequency range, you can bounce your signals off the ionosphere to extend much further than just line of sight. And for most people, HF is where the fun really starts with ham radio. 
This is where you can really get involved in DXing, which is making long distance contacts in other countries, or things like parks on the air and contesting. In an emergency situation, HF can be vital for long range backup communications. If you've already passed the technician exam, the general exam is not much more difficult. Just get on your ham radio prep app and knock out a lesson or two a day and the exam readiness dashboard will tell you when you're ready to take your test. Plus, you get video lessons along with that so you're learning as you study. Number nine, get on HF as a technician. It is worth mentioning that you can operate HF as a technician licensee, so you don't have to wait until you get your general license. Let's go back to our band plan. With technician, you get HF voice privileges on the 10 meter band, and a band again is just a range of frequencies, between 28.300 and 28.500 megahertz. So if you wanna go ahead and rip off the Band-Aid and buy your first HF radio, check out our guide on the top five HF radios for beginners. You'll also need a new antenna and you could build or buy this one. We've got guides on both. If you're ready to build a dipole for less than $100 or you just wanna buy a great starter antenna, check out the links with the video. Number 10, operate on the magic six meter band. There is another type of interesting operating available to technicians, which is operating on the six meter band. Hands call six meters the magic band. One minute you might be making a six meter contact with your neighbor, then the atmosphere changes and you can hear a ham 1,500 miles away. That's because the six meter band sits right between the VHF frequencies and the HF frequencies, meaning it has some properties of both. So on the same band you can make simplex and repeater contacts on, you can also make DX contacts with other countries. On six meters, you can bounce your signals off the atmosphere, jump the equator with trans-equatorial propagation or TEP. There's also tropospheric ducting where your signal rides the pockets of hot air to propagate long ranges. And you can even make a contact by bouncing your signals off the moon with earth, moon, earth bounce. And on six meters, you can start operating FT8 with the WSJTX software, which is one of the most popular digital modes right now. Most popular HF radios like the ICOM 7300 will work on six meters, and many mobile VHF and UHF focus radios will also support six meters. Check your radio specs. But if you really wanna get the most out of six meters, I recommend getting a 100 watt HF ham radio that also supports six meters. Another tip when operating six meters is to use a directional antenna, which is an antenna that points signals in one direction like a Yagi. Once you've got your equipment set up, have some fun, make some contacts and experiment to see what you can do. A bonus number 11 here for technicians is satellite operations. With your ham radio technician license, you can also make contacts with satellites. You might be surprised to learn that there are dozens of ham radio satellites orbiting the earth that act like repeaters for ham radio. And you don't need a big, powerful radio to make a contact with the satellite. You can use a handheld ham radio with five to eight watts and a directional antenna like a Yagi in order to make satellite contact. In order to make a satellite contact, first set up your handhold radio connected to a Yagi antenna. Then research upcoming satellite passes that will be within your range. Program your radio just like you would for a repeater using the transmit frequency, offset, and CTCSS tones. Then, as the satellite passes overhead, point your Yagi antenna in the direction you expect the satellite to be. Listen for other hams calling on the satellite and answer them, or make your own call by saying your call sign in grid square. Your grid square is just a four or six digit locator for your location. Operating satellites is one of the more fun and experimental parts of the amateur radio hobby that can open up huge opportunities for learning new skills. We'll add a more in-depth guide on satellite contact soon. So there you have it. Those are some great ways to get started operating as a technician licensee. Remember, ham radio license is just permission to use ham radio and ham radio frequencies, but you really start learning when you get hands-on. So get out there and make your first contact with a handheld. Get active on a local repeater. Then find some areas of the hobby you're interested in and keep learning and progressing. One of the best ways to accelerate your learning is to enroll in the Ham Radio Basics course from Ham Radio Prep. Myself and Professor Jim in 4 bfr will take you step by step through the most important topics in Ham Radio with video lessons, guides, and activities so you can get up and running quickly without all the confusion. 
And while you're at it, go ahead and upgrade to the general license because that's where you get the most privileges for popular activities like DXing, contesting, and POTA. The best way to study for your general license is the Ham Radio Prep General License course, which is an all-in-one program with short and easy to understand video lessons, quizzes, practice test games, and it tracks your progress to guarantee you pass your exam on the first try. Plus, you're actually learning the material with video guides instead of just taking endless quizzes. So download the Ham Radio Prep mobile app or sign up at hamradioprep.com to get started. This is James, November Zero Whiskey Radio Lima saying 73, and we hope to hear you on the air soon. My favorite thing about Ham Radio Prep is the overall organization and structure of the material. The video lesson, backed up by a written lesson, reinforces the material immediately, followed by practice tests. Your explanation are phenomenal. The way you keep everything simple and the way you organize the question, you really cannot not learn. Uh, definitely the videos and the mobile app, uh, because the mobile app, I could sit down any time I had just a minute or two, I could still get a few questions in. Stop stressing yourself. Do what you need to do. Use the app. Take the test. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.